Hello everyone, today I'm going to debunk the John Benet intruder theory. My name is Marcel Elvers, Master Profiler through Rita Communication. Please like above all, share and subscribe to my channel and add, me, add my video to your playlist. I like to start with quoting Nate Silver. Events that seem highly improbable in isolation become highly probable when large numbers of observations are considered. I say every event is made up of parts forming the whole, and the sum of the parts is greater than the whole. And I like to use an analogy of a car. A car is made up of many parts, and every part in itself is meaningless. However, combined, it forms a car, but it is still just a car. That is the sum of the parts. However, when the car is yours and the meaning of the car is your livelihood because it is a box truck for delivery or it is a sedan to drive your family around on vacation and get to work, that is greater than the whole. And so a chair is just a chair unless you put some meaning to it. So according to the intruder theorists, the intruder or intruders spent hours in the home. He was freely roaming around and he found a plaque with Subic Bay Training Center and thought to himself, well, that's a good acronym to use on a ransom note. I didn't even know I was going to write yet. He also saw a pay stop with the deferred payment of 118,000 and thought, well, that is a good number for the ransom. On top of that, he wrote the ransom note after her demise. And we know that because of the language used and the emotional impact it had on the author. Mm -hmm. The man was organized, calm, and above all, at ease in the home. He did not care or worry about being caught. Regarding the ransom note, I also like to say that this random intruder had strong similarities with Patsy's handwriting. There were many handwriting characteristics exactly the same. And he used her wording too. Now, that is a one in a billion chance that a random intruder had that many handwriting characteristics and linguistics in common with somebody that lived in the home he was going to kidnap a child from. The chance that there was a random intruder based on that fact alone is less than DNA evidence portrays. Now, there's also such a thing as Locard's principle. And what that means is that wherever we go, we bring something from us and leave it behind. But we also take something from the area where we're in back with us. So when you walk in the forest, I leave fibers behind in the forest. And when I leave the forest, I got mud on my shoes and leaves or whatever. And the same happened on a crime scene. There was zero trace evidence in the home that there was an intruder. And that suggests that spending hours there, that this man was really careful and making sure he would not be noticed. And he did that for hours. He did not leave fibers behind, nor fingerprints no mud from his shoes. But then he writes a long ransom note after the demise of the child on a notepad and Sharpie he found in the home. And in that note, he introduces himself. We are the four infection and signs with his name, the acronym SBTC. So on the one hand, he doesn't want to be noticed. And then in the note, he introduces himself. That doesn't make any sense. That contradict each other. Now, if he was that organized, abduction was certainly not the motive. Why not? Simple. It was a blow to the head and apparently a stun gun was used, which was also debunked. But let's say a stun gun was used. Both would run the risk of the child screaming and waking up the parents. If I was that organized, I would bring chloroform. 
so I can subdue her quietly and carry her out. Murder was certainly not the motive either, because again, a simpler method is to shoot her in her bed with a silencer and leave. Leave her in the bed, move the body around, and run the risk of being caught. So the behaviors that we have seen and we know, and the motivation completely contradict each other. I make sure I, I don't leave any fibers around. I make sure I won't be noticed, but then I leave a note. That contradict each other. Abduction as a mode of contradict each other. I should have used chloroform. Murder was certainly not the motive because there were simpler methods and quieter methods. There's only one conclusion. There was no intruder. So John Bonet's demise was not planned, not anticipated. It was rather unexpected and accidental. Furthermore, I cannot imagine that Patsy would write a ransom note to cover for a random stranger. Nor can I imagine that both parents would contaminate the crime scene willfully and deliberately to obscure what the random stranger could have left behind. That doesn't make any sense. So there's only one conclusion. There was no intruder. Rather, it was an accident by a family member. And only John, Patsy, and Burke were in the home. So the intruder theorists that cling on to the intruder theory have some explaining to do. Explain why the handwriting in the ransom notes was so extremely similar to Patsy's, why they contaminate the crime scene, explain the lack of trace evidence, and explain why the intruder used a notepad and Sharpie and did not bring a ransom note with him. I say Occam's razor still applies. The simplest solution is normally the correct one. 